Hello and welcome. My name is Therese McGeady and I am today's moderator. Today both Greg Chan and Ken Lay from Compose and Jeff Prothero from Alliant will demo Procero's integration with Compose's ganging module Quick Fit for Print. Together they will demonstrate how Procero users with Alliant's automated workflow integrator can integrate with Quick Fit for Print to realize cost and time savings. We will plan to reserve the end of this webinar for questions. In the meantime, please feel free to use the questions feature in the GoToWebinar control panel to ask your questions. We will address as many as possible at the end of the session. Today's webinar will be recorded and available on Alain.com under the Events tab that under Webinars and Training. Thanks for joining us today. We are going to go ahead and begin with a brief overview of Elaine Prisero with Jeff. Hi, thank you everyone for your time today. Uh, I'm Jeff Provero. Uh, I look after the Asia Pacific region. Uh, so I've actually known uh, Compose for many, many years in this region, uh, having worked with them both at Codec and in Agfa in previous, day, in previous years. Uh, so what we're actually looking at today is the integration with uh, Quick Fit for Print, uh, which is a imposition ganging module. Uh, this is obviously designed to uh, optimize the production facilities, optimize the way that you will take um, orders through the Procero system and through to production to optimize uh, and reduce the amount of wastage. Uh, for those people, we, we do have some people that are attending that are not so familiar with uh, Procero, so very briefly I'll cover some of the finer points. Uh, it's a cloud-based system uh, providing uh, B2B, B2C and informational sites. Uh, one, you know, the main features of this, of course, are that you can have interactive products. You can define the rules of engagement on how an end user of a website can interact with a, with a related product. Uh, we have a number of different skins, the look and feel of the system, uh, many of which of course are responsive, meaning that they will work across multi-platforms, uh, including mobile devices. We have integrated payment and shipping methods, um, approval and budget control mechanisms, so it actually offers uh, a great deal more than a simplified web to print solution and of course integration to many MIS and workflow prepress systems. Uh, in terms of the cart flexibility, uh, users have the choice of you know, um, sorting through catalogs and products themselves. Uh, you've also got the options to display fulfilled inventory, uh, interactive pricing, of course, such that end users can select from criteria that you define, uh, such as different substrates, different finishing mechanisms, etc. And totally integrated um, shipping and payment methods online. And, of course, the system does allow for proofing and approval. Uh, one of the major features that a lot of customers are using are the VDP capabilities. Uh, this is actually quite a strong function with us, um, and that involves both text and image data. So there are a num number of different scenarios that you can design with products um, relating to VDP. Uh, We've also integrated, of course, with uh, the common social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram. And then for third-party um, graphics or photo um, stores such as Photolia. Uh, obviously, taking this further, uh, we integrate. Uh, you can integrate, sorry, to vendors, uh, brokers. You can obviously operate multiple storefronts. Uh, some being commercial, of course, in terms of, in the context of B2C. Others being a B2B relationship. And finally, we have the automated workflow integration. And this is, this is effectively the, the automation part to allow for a lights out or hands-free connectivity between the Procedo and EDOC solution through to the pre-press and other pre-press modules, um, such as the module that we are just about to discuss here. 
So what I'd like to do at this point in time, it was just a very brief introduction to Crusader, um, the helicopter view as they say. What I'm actually going to do now is to hand across to Greg Chan and Greg is then going to give just a few slides to introduce uh, Compose. So Greg, I'm handing over to you now, sir. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone, or good morning if you are in the southern part of the world. Um, for people who don't know Compose, uh, well, I just would like to take a couple of slides to give you a quick introduction. So we actually started some 30 years ago by our CEO, Tom Seeds, and our office is based in Hong Kong. We have a very strong technical team, mainly seasoned professional with experience from different vendors and also G7 color experts. Our solutions, uh, RIPs, uh, print-related workflow and solutions and EPUB solutions are sold through our resellers channels worldwide and also to our OEM customers. Our focus is pre-press, press room and color management products. Our aim is to help our customers to become more productive and to save them time and save them cost. We have uh, quite a few uh, products apart from the general uh, pre-press workflow. We also have a workflow for newspaper, for example. And with that, uh, all the components then normally go to a workflow such as imposition, uh, SIP3, uh, color proofing, etc. Uh, we have uh, specific modules for. We also have some specialized solutions such as solutions for hang tags, for packaging, for labels, uh, and um, digital printing. We have a number of uh, category of families of products, uh, workflow, and then we have the production family, press room family, proofing, as well as RIP, and of course the bespoke solutions we provide to OEM customers. Uh, we have actually quite a lots of uh, OEM customers and also uh, development vendors. Um, our solution is based on uh, 20 years of experience in pre-press, so uh, have uh, grown to be quite uh, well known in some area. Um, we develop for OEM partners and here are just uh, some of the names and we also integrate some of the third parties tools into our solutions. We also specifically have uh, customer development teams which help our OEM customers to package solutions to meet their needs. So um, I would now like to hand you over to uh, Ken Lai uh, who will uh, carry out the demonstration. Hello everyone, I'm Ken and today I'll show you how Quick Feed for Print works. Uh, but before I do that, I need to show you how to get jobs from your Pisario Cloud onto your workstation. And you, for that you need a software from Pisario called Automated Workflow Integrator or AWI. And you have to define a simple download rules. The download rules would say what kind of files you want, so right now it's only PDF. And you can say where to download the PDF files to, and where to download the stew. And you can select the job ticket format, which is Presario XML. So once you have defined that, uh, the software will periodically pull the Presario cloud for job files. Okay, so this is the first part, this software will download files from the Presario Cloud onto your workstation. Now in addition, you also need a software from Compose called Job Connect. 
Job Connect would convert the job ticket, the Presario job ticket, to a format that is suitable for Quick Feed. And for that, you have to define what we call a channel. In a channel, you just say where you can find the job tickets, or where you can find the PDF files and the job ticket format. And then you have to define an output rules. Now, in the output rules setup dialog, uh, you can see all the Presario products listed. So let's say I don't want to do all my Presario products in QuickFit. I only want to do my business cards and my postcards and maybe even my certificates products. So you check those products and then you specify an output folder. So when Job Connect receives a business card files, it will send it to the output folder or it receive a postcard files is send it to the output folder. So let me just start Job Connect first. And in AWI, I'm just going to download a couple of jobs that I just submitted. And I just click, click process so it will start downloading immediately. So it's now polling the Fisario Cloud and it's fetching the job list. And the first one is being downloaded now. And once it's downloaded, you can see Job Connect picks it up and converts it to Quick Fit format. And the second one has been downloaded in AWI and yeah, it's picked up by Job Connect and also converted to Quick Fit format. So now let's go to Quick Fit. Now, if you look at the uh, top left corner, you can see the input panel. And if, in order for Quick Feed to receive job, you have to start input. So I'll do that, and you can see it's progressing. It's receiving the first file and the second file, and that's done. Now, in the input panel, you can see different, what we call, filters. I'll show you the first one called Ready. Now the ready filter is going to list all the jobs with the job status ready. What that means is the jobs is in the system, but they have not been imposed or printed yet. So those are ready jobs. So if I click on the ready filter, all the jobs listed in the job list below are jobs that has been in that that are in the system, but they have not been printed yet. So for the completed queue or completed filter, it lists all the jobs that have status of completed. That means those jobs have been printed. And the next one is a different one, different types. It's called 70 pound bright white smooth. Now what this filter does is list all the jobs that are to be printed on this specific media called 70 pound bright white smooth paper and also has job status ready. Now with a filter like this I know that when I click on it all the jobs listed are to be printed on the same paper so I know that I can gang them up together. And the next one 120 pound is the same type of filter but it's for a different kind of media. And the next one the flies and letterheads. This one is again is a bit different. And this one is not selecting jobs by the media that it's for, it's selecting jobs by the Presario job types. So in this case, I have checked catalogs, and then I've also checked letterheads. So this means that this filter will select only the jobs of the product type catalogs and letterheads. And then down here is that size I have check single-sided, so it only gives me those products that are printed single-sided, and also those jobs that are ready. Now you can see the next one brochure is just to show me all the jobs that are of the product brochures, and the next one shows me the business cards and postcards single-sided, and the last one shows me the business card and postcard that are double-sided. Okay. So these are the static filters. If I click on one, I know you know, what kind of jobs that I will get in a job list. Now let me select a ready queue which lists all the jobs that I have in the system. 
I can also go to the dynamic filter here and select a particular paper, say 120 pounds. Oh, maybe I select a 70 pounds. Then it will list all the jobs that are to be printed on the 70 pound paper. Or I can say I only want A3 jobs. Show me all the A3 jobs in the system. I can select to the A3 size. And it will show me all the A3 jobs in the system. And I can also say I only want jobs that are to be printed, that have a print quantity of 200. So make that uh, 500. Okay. So it will show me all the jobs that have ordered a quantity of 500. In addition, I can also search for a specific product type. So I only want my catalogs. You select catalogs here. Or I want a specific job. So I only want the job with the order number 85. So I click OK. And it shows me all the items in the order number 85. Okay, so you can see that QuickFit gives you a lot of features to find the specific jobs that you want to get. Okay, now let's start doing a simple imposition. I'll create a new layout and I'll use um, uh, SM102 paper that's about 40 by 28 inches. And I will do my flyers job now. I got 19 flyers and letterheads. So I just drag the jobs in to impose it. And QuickFit will start and repeat it so it fill up the sheet. Now if you look at the right hand side, okay, this is a solution panel and it lists the solutions that we have found and right now there's only one solution. And the solution has one set of plates or one sheet. And the total print run is 28. The coverage is 81.71%. And the extras is 0.8%. Extra meaning that, well, let's say you have a job uh, and a customer order 100 copies, but you printed 102 copies, then you get two extras, which is 2%. So that's what extras means. And down below, at least the sheets that you have in a solution. Right now, we only have one sheet, so you have uh, one, uh, only one entry here. And this showed me that I have one job on the sheet, and the print run for the sheet is 28, again the coverage and the extras. Okay, so let me drag another job in. Okay, and notice that if I put my mouse on the job, it will show a tooltip. The tooltip will show me the order number, which is 87, and the item number in the job, that's 2, and it shows me the trim size and the quantity. The quantity for both jobs are 250. I got four, four copies here, so I need a print one of 63 to achieve a print quantity of 250. So QuickFit will calculate the repeats I need to and the print one to produce the quantity that the customer needs. So let me put in a third one. Well, you don't have to drag jobs in one by one. You can just go ahead and select a bunch of jobs and put them in. Uh, and QuickFit will automatically uh, calculate the repeats required and the placement. Okay. So let's say, okay, this the coverage. It's okay. It's not ideal, but it's this. Uh, this I cannot put another A4 size jobs on it. So, but I want to swap these two jobs. Okay. I can just drag these jobs over and they will be swapped. And I can also rotate this job if I want to. So, And I can also swap these two jobs. Okay. Now let's say I don't want this job at the bottom right corner. And I want to replace it with this job in the job list. I can just drag it over and I can swap them. And, okay, this looks good, but I just want to check 
the bleed of this particular job. Okay, so I zoom right in. And there's a feature called trim line. I just turn it on and it shows me in the red dash line where the trim box is. So I can see that there's some bleed for this job with the black background. So it looks okay. So I'll just print it. And right now I'm printing this sheet size. If you need to print the plate as well, you can select the plate here. But right now I'm just printing the, the sheet. And I can select whether I want a layout sheet report or a job sheet report. I'll show you what they are a little bit later. So I just click OK to print it and enable output so it generates the PDF files. So we started printing and it's done. So I'll show you what the output looks like. And there are three PDF files in the output. The first one is just the imposition. Okay, so you can see the color bars and the marks there are predefined with the layout and also the label text. Okay, so this is just uh, the PDF, the high-res PDF, print-ready PDF for your workflow. And the next file is the job report. Now, with the, at the top left corner, it shows you uh, the number of jobs on the sheet, uh, the date and time the file was generated, the paper is to be printed on, the size of the paper, and the print one uh, of 250. Now, on the right-hand side, you see a thumbnail for your sheet, so you know what it looks like. And further down, it lists all the jobs on the sheet. So it shows you the owner number, of each job and the item number, the copies that are printed, and the extras that were printed. And so this is the job report. And the next one is what we call the layout sheet. This is exactly the same size as the printer sheet, but we lighten the uh, job graphics and we put some information on top. So we put information like order numbers, uh, the item number of the job, the prop type of the job, uh, the name of the original PDF file, the trim size, uh, the order the quantity, and the actual quantity. So what you can do with this sheet is you put it on top of your printer sheet, and then you guillotine it with the printer sheet. So after guillotine, you will have this sheet on top. So you grab the sheet, and you know exactly which uh, order is from, which item is from, and you can find out uh, how to ship the product. Now let me uh, do another imposition, but this time in a different way. Oh, notice that I've just done nine jobs, so now the nine jobs are in a completed queue. Because they have already been done, and we don't want to redo them again unless we have to. So let me just close the sheet, uh, create another sheet, uh, again, 70 pounds paper, SM102 size. Okay, this time I'll do it in a different way. I'll just put a job on the layout. And I want to change the gutter to zero. I don't want to do a double cut, I just want to do a single cut. So I set uh, the gutter to zero. Uh, by the way, this is where you set the uh, sheet. Uh, you can define the sheet width and height, and you can specify the work style. This is a default work style. You can change it in the layout window after you've done the imposition. And this is the minimum coverage that the software will try to achieve. Uh, in some cases, it may not be able to achieve uh, whatever, what you entered, and in that case, the, the solution will be displayed in red. Like in this case, on the right hand side, you can see this sheet is listed in red because the coverage is too low. It's lower than the minimum coverage. And then you can specify the minimum gutter between jobs and the margins around the sheet. These are for color bars and registration marks and label text and so on. You can specify the sheet marks like color bars, uh, label text, 
uh, and registration mark, and you can specify page marks here. Uh, this is the trim marks. Okay, so I've just changed the gutter. Uh, this time I'm not going to print yet. I'm just going to save this layout as a template. So I'll save this. I'll call this T6. And I'll close it. With a template, I can use it to create a new layout. So I just select a template I just created. And you can see there's no jobs on the sheet, but you can see a number of placeholders. Uh, if you're doing a lot of uh, A4 jobs, and you may want to create a template uh, so that you can repeatedly use the template to impose your A4 jobs. So let me just drag a bunch of jobs in. So you can see it fills up. Oops, I missed one out. So let me try this one. Okay, it's saying the job size is not fit to the placeholder. This because the template is for A4 size job, so it's 210 by 297 millimeter. But this job is 220 by 307, so it's too big for the placeholder, and I cannot put it on the template. So I select this one instead. Okay, uh, it looks good. So I will just print it again. So you can see I now only have one job left in flyers. I will not do anything for flyers now, but I will try to finish my business card. So I'll select a 120 pound paper, again SM102 size, and I go over to my business cards and postcard. I got both name cards and postcard in this queue. I We'll just do the postcard first. So I just select all my postcard and drag them over. Okay, the coverage is not bad, but I can see a lot of repeats. Uh, but I don't have any more postcards, so maybe I'll just use a smaller sheet. And assuming I also have a GTO press or SM52 press, I switch to the SM52 size. Okay, it looks good. There's uh, only a single repeat for most jobs. So, for example, this one, the print quantity is 500, and I only have a single repeat on the sheet. And this one, the print quantity is 1,000, so I got two copies on the sheet. So, this looks good, and I'll just print it. Okay, so all the postcards, the single side postcards are done. I'll now go ahead and impose all the name cards. There are 102 name cards. I will select all of them, put them all on the sheet, and it's giving me two sheets. On the first sheet, there are 98 jobs. Okay, some jobs, uh, the quantity is 100, but some have quantities 200. Uh, altogether, there are 98 different jobs on the first sheet. But on the second sheet, I only have four jobs. Now, quickly still try to step and repeat it, but I probably do not want to output this plate. So I'll just discard this plate, and I'll do a print. But this print will only print the first sheet. It will not print the second sheet, because I discarded it. So I just click OK, and this time it's going to take a bit of time because there are 98 name card jobs on the sheet. OK, so now I have Four business cards left. What am I going to do with it? Uh, not a problem. I just create another layout. I also happen to have a digital press. So 
I select my A3 paper with a new layout, click OK, and select the four jobs. And okay. Okay. And uh, I only have one sheet, print one of 34 with four jobs on, so I just print it. And now all my business cards and postcards, the single-sided ones, are done. I okay. Let me see what I have left. I have one flyers, fifteen brochures, and well, double-sided postcards. So I'll do a double-sided postcard first. I create a new layout again, SM102, and I'll create a and I put all the postcards in. Now the coverage is okay, but I am getting a lot of repeats. Uh, so this time, instead of switching to a smaller paper size, I can actually switch to a different work style. I can switch to a work and turn work style, so I put the fronts on the left and back on the right, or I can switch to work and tumble. Yeah, quick fit will automatically impose space on the work style. Okay, this one looks good, so I'm just going to print it. Okay, the business cards, uh, the double-sided postcard are also done, and I'm left with 15 brochures and one flyer. So let me impose the brochures now. There are 15 of them. I drag them all onto the sheet, and I got uh, the solution with four sheets. Now let me try to change it. Right now I'm packing by row, but let's see what happens when I pack by column. I actually have three sheets. So there's the first one, the second one, and the third one. Uh, but I remember I have a flyer left. If this flyer is single-sided, but this is the only job left in my job list. So maybe I will just put it uh, on this sheet as well. So I can do that manually. I just drag it over and it's a portrait job so I'll rotate it by 90 and I would place that under this jobs. Okay, under this job uh, and separate it by 3 millimeters. Okay, so it's placed there but uh, the job is a little bit too far onto the job on to on the right. So it's inside the job on the right. So what I can do is I move it to the left and then I select these two jobs and I go align the right edges. Okay. This looks perfect. So I'll just print out. And it's generating three sheets and this time it's going to take some time because the jobs are quite big. Now there goes the first one, the second one, and the last one. So let me go back to my job list. I have zero job in a reticule. I'll finish all 158 jobs that I had about 15 minutes ago. Uh, the jobs in a completed queues, I can still impose them if I want to. Uh, for example, if on the printout there's a problem with a certain job and, and it needs to be reprinted, uh, you can just drag the jobs in a completed queue onto the sheet and reimpose them if needed. Uh, so, I have finished all the jobs and uh, that will conclude my demonstration. I will pass the control back to Greg.
Okay, thank, thank you, Ken. Uh, I just want to do a quick conclusion summary for everyone. Uh, as you can see, Persero and QuickFit are suitable for both B2B and B2C. Although QuickFit can work as a standard long applications, we think it is complementary to Persero storefront and they work together to bring the next level of web to print automations. That is, you can capture more potential business by the internet, you can handle large number of small jobs with ease, support both offset and digital environment. That enables you to maximize your production resources and minimize wastage. In short, it allows you to do more with less quickly and profitably. Okay, I think that concludes our presentation and demonstration. I will now pass you back to Teresa. Teresa, sorry. Okay, great. Thank you. We now like to move into the questions and answers portion of this webinar. So just a reminder, if you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can go ahead and go into the questions area within the GoToWebinar module and ask your questions there. We'll just answer them as, as they file in. So we do have some questions that came in uh, throughout the presentation we'd like to go ahead and address. So first one here, how do you set up a new sheet size? Uh, okay, can someone pass the control back to me? I need to show that on screen. Ah, sure. Okay. Can. Okay, got it. <clears throat> okay, so let well, she's are created in the papers manager, so let me just add a new sheet. Now, the paper name listed here uh, is created automatically. When we receive a presario job ticket with a new paper name, we just add it to the paper name list. All right, so this is done automatically. The user doesn't have to do anything with the paper name. Uh, if there's a weight associated with the paper separately, you can select that here. In uh, width and height, you can enter the sheet width and height, and you can specify the default work style. The work style can be changed uh, in, when you're doing the ganging, and minimum coverage is the um, coverage that we are trying to achieve. Uh, so we will pack, we will put as much job as on the sheet as possible, trying to achieve the minimum coverage, uh, but in some cases it's just not possible. Um, down here you can define a minimum space between jobs uh, and you can define the margins around the sheet so let's say in this case I have a color bar on top so I will probably give it 10 mil for the color bar and okay in sheet marks uh, you specified uh, the marks on the sheet so you can have a registration mark you can specify the size and you can specify where to put the registration mark either at the corners or middle of edges. And you can have custom marks. Custom marks are just PDF files. Uh, you import your PDF files and then you say I want to put it at the bottom left corner or bottom right corner and I want to offset it from the uh, corner by let's say 10 mil and 20 mil X and Y. So you can do that, it's just a PDF files. Now color bars are quite similar, they are also just PDF files and the placement are also the same as custom marks. But in this case we have two new functions, we have sequential fill, so if your color bars is shorter than your paper edge, you can say sequential fill and it will fill it up to fill the uh, width or the height of the sheet. And, but you don't want your color bar to get to the edge of the paper, so you can leave, let's say, one minute gap from the edge of the paper, uh, so the color bar doesn't extend all the way to the edge of the paper. Uh, you can also specify the X and Y offset from your uh, placement points. Okay, so with custom label, the placement is the same. Uh, with custom label, you can specify uh, to have the plate serial number 
uh, the place surface, the output date time, uh, or the sheet size, the color name, and so on, uh, as text on the sheet. Okay, so these are sheet marks with page mark. Uh, you basically select the trim marks that you want uh, to have for each job. Now, packing method, you can pack by row or pack by column. If you are packing by row, then we'll start at top left. We'll pack uh, from left to right in a row. And once we have no no more space in a row, we start a new row. So And then we pack from left to right again. If you are packing by column, we start from the top to bottom. And then once the column is done, we start a new column on the right. And then we start, we go top to bottom again. Now with job orientation, we have automatic and same orientation. Uh, with automatic, this means that if your job has um, uh, can fit a certain space, if I rotate it, uh, then I'll rotate it to fill that space. But if I say same orientation, then all jobs must be in the same orientation, either portrait or landscape. Uh, so I won't suddenly have a, have a job that is in a different orientation because that sometimes will make guillotine a bit more difficult. And with the alignment, it's just the alignment of the imposition on the sheet. Uh, so that's how you specify the sheets. You can have any number of sheets and you can use this to create your new layout. Okay. So I hope that answered the questions. Great, thank you. Another question here, are there possibilities to do lights out automation specifically for digital press, so entirely for business card orders? Uh, for, no, we, this particular version will not do fully automatic imposition. So uh, a user will still need to periodically come to the software and put jobs on the sheet. But the imposition part is automatic. So you okay. just have to come over the software to periodically put jobs onto the sheet. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, another question here. Can it be used for B2B and B2C customers? Uh, yeah. Uh, the example I show you, I guess, is for B2C. But uh, we have some big printers uh, using QuickFit, and they actually get jobs from other businesses, other printers. So that's why the layout sheet that I showed you, let me show you the layout sheet again. Uh, let's put a good one. So with the info on top of the job, uh, we actually customize it for some printers. We can put the name of the customer in this section, and we can also uh, put the area the printer is located in. Uh, in this section. So you can look at the layout sheet, you grab your stack of printed job and you know that it's from San Francisco, uh, from printer ABC or it's from Chicago, uh, it's uh, for printer BCD or something like that. So yeah, it's for B2B and it's also for B2C. Okay, great. Hmm. Another question here. Can Quick Fit for Print be used for digital and also offset customers? Yeah, uh, well, because QuickFit doesn't limit the size of the imposition, so it can be SM102 uh, 40 by 28 inch uh, sheets, or it can be an A3 plus page, or even A4 page. Uh, we have uh, quite a few customers uh, with Indigos, or with, uh, let's say, a Konakami Nota or Xerox, using QuickFit just to impose name cards and postcards. So you can use it for digital and you can use it for offset. All right, very good. Well, that is all for our Q&A session for today. We just want to thank everybody who was able to join. And uh, just a reminder, the recording from today will be posted to Alliant.com under the events page. So if you have um, a need to go ahead and reference the recording from today, that's where it will be found. So thanks again for joining. Have a great day. Thank you. Good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.